Welcome back, power enthusiasts. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of electrical power systems. Specifically, we'll explore the intricacies of parallel operation and load sharing among synchronous generators. Imagine a scenario where we have three synchronous generators, each with its unique capacity and droop settings, connected in parallel. Our mission is to understand how these generators work together to provide a stable power supply to the grid. Our generators have rated capacities of 300 megawatts, 180 megawatts, and 140 megawatts. Each generator also possesses a speed droop. In our case, the generators have speed droops of 4%, 6%, and 0% for the isochronous governors. Currently, our generators are operating at 50% of their rated capacities, and the system frequency is stable at 60 Hz. But what happens if we alter the load or power requirements? Now, let's understand the concept of droop. Droop represents the frequency change as the load transitions from no load to full load. For our generators, the frequency changes are 2.4 Hz, 3.6 Hz, and 0 Hz, respectively. To determine the droop values, we divide the frequency changes by the total power. This allows us to quantify how much the frequency changes per unit of power. The droop values for our three generators are calculated as 0 0.008, 0 0.02, and 0 Hz per megawatt. By multiplying the droop value with the initial power for each generator, we can find the corresponding frequency change. Let's apply this formula to our generators. The initial power for the first generator is 150 megawatts, and the droop value is 0 0.008. Multiplying these values, we find that the frequency change is 1.2 Hz. Adding this change to the system frequency of 60 Hz, we get a no load frequency of 61.2 Hz. Moving on to the second generator, with an initial power of 90 MW and a droop value of 0 0.02, multiplying these values gives us a frequency change of 1.8 Hz. Adding this change to the system frequency of 60 Hz, we arrive at a no load frequency of 61.8 Hz. Now, let's introduce an increase in the total system loading and examine the consequences. To calculate the new system frequency, we consider the loading of each generator. The third generator with the isochronous governor delivers a maximum of 70 MW initially. Any additional load power should be generated by generators 1 and 2. Assuming increasing the load power by 100 MW, we observe that the third generator, equipped with an isochronous governor, is delivering a maximum of 70 MW. This means that the remaining 30 MW must be generated by generators 1 and 2. The additional power change can be expressed as the sum of the power changes for the first and second generators. Keep in mind when the load increases, all generators operate at the same reduced frequency. By substituting the equations, we find that the new system frequency is 59.82857 Hz. But how does this affect the individual power output of each generator? To determine the power change for each generator, we take into account their respective droop settings. As mentioned before when the load increases, all generators operate at the same reduced frequency. By dividing the difference between the old system frequency, 60 Hz, and the new system frequency by the droop setting, we find that generators 1 and 2 generate an additional 21.42875 MW and 8.5715 MW, respectively. Hence, the newly generated power for the first and second generators is 171.42875 MW and 98.5715 MW, respectively. The generator with the isochronous governor continues to deliver 140 megawatts. It's important to note that if the extra power required is less than 70 megawatts, only the third generator with the isochronous governor will provide the power, and the system frequency will remain at 60 Hz. Even if the load reduction is less than 70 megawatts, only the third generator will decrease its power output, keeping the system frequency stable. Therefore, for a load power between 240 megawatts and 380 megawatts, the system frequency will stay at 60 Hz. The first and second generators will deliver 240 megawatts of power, and the remaining power will be supplied by the third generator. And there you have it, power enthusiasts. Parallel operation and load sharing among synchronous generators can be quite a balancing act. 
It's the coordinated effort of these machines that keeps our electrical systems running smoothly. Stay tuned for more electrifying content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Crafted with dedication by Babak Nia to bring you valuable insights and knowledge.